May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always pleasing to you, O God, our Redeemer and Savior. Amen. Let's be seated. This week, when I was thinking about my sermon, I made a little picture. Now I know it's hard to see from the back, so I'll just I'll describe it to you. I've been um, taking this class online called Artful Leadership, and it's talking about how to infuse different kinds of art into your uh, ministry leadership. Some of it took, some of it didn't. But one of the things that I thought was kind of a fun piece, or at least I modified to work for me, is this idea of a sermon... um, a uh, sermon coloring sheet. Um, so I went through all the lessons, and each lesson has a different color, and I picked out, as I was reading them, the words that seemed most important to me, the words that kept jumping out. And so um, from Ephesians, well, circumcision, that's right there in the beginning. Um, <laughs> but cornerstone and peace and brought near and the citizens and grows and um, all sorts of different things so that in the end, the word that came together the most um, was belonging, belonging. So today our sermon is about belonging and if we were to title it, it would be who's in and who's out because we need to know who belongs, right? That's the question in our lessons. And not only in our lessons, but that's the question in our communities, what we face right now. Who's in and who's out? We see it at school. We see it at work. We see it at church. We see it in our nation. Today we're getting these readings about something that was important at the start of this new religion, at the start of Christianity. And it's just as important in our life today, our faith life and our life outside of the church. How often are we in a room or in a conversation, especially with somebody we don't really know, and we kind of feel them out? We feel out people and places to see, are these my people? Is this my place? Is this a safe place that's here? It happens in lots of different ways. Um, Think about, I'm thinking about new schools, because my kids will be starting new schools in a couple weeks, and they've always been at the same one before. Now they have to go in and they have to figure out what are the cliques and which one is mine? Which one is my group? It's hard, right? It's scary. Um, I told the eight o'clock or the eight o'clockers that you know even little things that you might think are, are normal therapy groups or something like that. You're like, are these people okay? Or are they crazier than me? You know, <laughs> or not as crazy as me, as the case might be. Whether you're at a new work, a place of work, in a new neighborhood, at a new school, that question is out there. Will I belong? I feel like in my neighborhood over the last week or two, we have sprung up Teslas like nobody's business. It's like, was it the movie Gremlins where they touched each other and they like (laughs) multiplied? And so now I'm like, if I don't get a new Tesla whenever I get a car, do I fit in this neighborhood? I don't know. We think about it in politics. Is this my person or not? There's more, although. Now, there are a lot of statistics that are being thrown around right now. Research has always been done, but especially in the post-COVID time and the com- and combining with the, the political atmosphere and culture, we see a lot of research about isolation, about loneliness, about the pressure to be in or to be out and how that is responded to. We know that there's a crisis. A lot of it centers in our teens, but it's also all ages. People don't necessarily know how to be connected. People don't feel like they're welcome in places. There's all of that, do I belong question. The good news, perhaps, is that it's not just us that worked on this. Maybe the bad news is it's been going on for a couple thousand years. But the good news is that this is something that was also an issue back in Paul's time. So let's start with him. We have this question today that on its face, it seems like they're kind of talking about who's circumcised and who's not. Ladies, we are good. Um, Do they need to be? Is it this physical cut that makes people part of the right group, that makes them belong, part of the family? And they're saying, no, that's not it. 
It was at one time, perhaps, but what we're concerned about right now is where we are in our hearts and souls. That this circumcision, if you will, is not a physical act, but it's more of a mental and spiritual formation within yourself. Are you allowing yourself to be in this new space, to understand this new way of looking at God and looking at church and looking at the people around us? Is that, if you are, then you belong. And if you're not, well, maybe you're not there yet. Scary thing, isn't it? Who belongs in this new community that is being built in Ephesus? What is the right group right there? Now, this is probably a tangent that doesn't need to happen, but um, a quick note is that scholars are not actually sure if Paul wrote this letter. In fact, generally, most scholars think he didn't. Based on the style of writing and some of the references, they think it was written after Paul, well after Paul. And the question, I guess, is does it matter No is the answer, the short answer, but the long answer is that I think there's something interesting, something hopeful, something um, that resonates with me that this question of how you belong and what you need to do and what's the right thing was not just the very first people who were following Christ, like we see it in different places. Um, It's not just now, it was throughout that time of of growth and formation that we see it. If anything, I think it brings a sense of and a need to define belonging even more. What does it mean to belong? How do we understand that? Paul was worried about, and we see this in other letters, this very topic. And those who later wrote in his name also knew this was an issue. How are we... in? Think about it. If it's a totally new tradition and you have to figure out you're in, you're out, you're in, you're out, what's the determination there? In the last group, I suggested that uh, the men who had real short hair, you know, in the old times, they would have been out, right? Because Samson, long hair. But now they were in, and those of you that have, you know, hippie hair, you're out. That's the way it works. It's not that, but it is the kind of question that we're asking, right? And it's not just us. It's not just Paul. In 2 Samuel, we hear a talk about who's going to build a house of the king, of Nathan and David, trying to figure out who's responsible for the job, what are their roles, and moreover, the critical part is what is God offering and promising that the people of Israel, to the people of Israel? It's that they'll have a permanent place, a place where they're planted, a place where they belong. Basically, there is this whole lesson talking about being given a place, a place to be for Israel while they're in God's favor, a place that is their own. But the thing is, as I read that lesson, I don't think it's just about these people of Israel. In some ways, it's very much about God. God is like, look, man, you keep sending me around in this tent, and it's very unsturdy, and it doesn't seem stable. And When are you going to build me a house, one of cedar planks, in fact? It's got to be a good house, right? I need a place, too. I want to be permanent. Not because God lives in a permanent place, but because God needs a sense of permanence in the lives of the people that are God's people. And having a permanent house... Well, that means God belongs within the community. And that means that we understand that God belongs within us and that God's promise to us, that desire that we're having to be part of God is something that can be fulfilled. Now, normally I like to focus on one lesson, maybe two, and in fact, I criticize greatly when people do three. But I think we need to hear the gospel just a bit. Um, Because when it comes down to whether or not we belong, Israel had a place to, to belong. The new citizens of Ephesus belonged to the faith. It is all a question of, are we good enough? Are we right? Are we worthy? And with a gospel lesson that recognizes everyone, These people who, yes, they were kind of annoying because they weren't letting me have my afternoon nap like I need after I've done the preaching, right? That's what Jesus is essentially saying. Um, After that, they want to come, and and Jesus says, okay, I was going to take a nap, but, and maybe even have some lunch, 
but I'm going to instead welcome all of you, and I'm going to teach you anyway. And I'm going to walk through these um, halls and these spaces where the sick have all gathered, and I'm going to recognize the healthy and the sick and the apostles and the villagers, and I'm going to set before you all a world, a space in the world, anyway, in which everyone belongs and everyone is welcome. I kind of got to the end of writing this and I was a little stumped of what, what am I going to do to actually finish because I can talk to you all about how the theme of the lessons is belonging and hopefully you all have figured that out by now. Um, but what's next is the question, right? Or what, it may, what takes it the next step? And I had the opportunity yesterday to go to Trinity and St. Paul's, which is um, the oldest church in the diocese and the oldest church on the West Coast, actually, oldest Episcopal church on the West Coast. Um, they're celebrating their 175th anniversary. Big, giant um, stone church in, I don't know what part of San Francisco, somewhere. I don't really know the city well yet. Um, but the Uber driver did, so we were good. Um, so um, we're there and we're celebrating, and it also happens to be Bishop Mark's last um, service and last sermon um, as the Bishop of the Diocese of California. And he, coincidentally, I like to think, was also talking about belonging and about how we love one another and how we interact with one another and how we recognize the awe of God within one another. There was a play and everything. It was great. But the thing that he said um, somewhere in the middle that really caught my ear and I thought was something we all need to think about this week and going forward is he said, what people judge by outward appearances, God judges by hearts. What people judge by outward appearances, God judges by hearts. We want to belong. It's not about a physical look or anything that has happened to us. It is, and we are invited to belong to. And it's, again, not about a physical look or a physical anything like that. It's not about are we standing in the right place at the right time. It's about what is in our hearts and what do we do in that place and in that time. God welcomes all of us to belong to this family and to belong to this sense of joy and love and this hope that we have in the world. It doesn't matter what your favorite color is, if your hair is long or short or anything like that. What matters is what's in your heart. That's where the love is. That's where we relate to one another, one person to another. So as you go out this week, recognize that you want to belong to the world, to God's world, to your communities, and recognize that it's not just you. So do the others around you. And all it takes is a little bit of love to make sure that they know that they do, just as you do as children of God. Amen. <laughs>